Today we're going over the brand new R200 ring light from Godox. Stay tuned. What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Maria. I'm a professional portrait photographer based in Georgetown, Texas and Maui, Hawaii. For the best advice on how to build your photography business, make sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell so you're notified every single week when I make a new video. I am so excited to be reviewing this product. As you guys know, I am a Godox user for all of pretty much all of my lights. You may have watched this video right here all about the Godox AD200 and those videos are going to go together with this one because the R200, which is the new ring light from Godox, is powered by the AD200. So I'm gonna show you a little bit more about this setup and give you a little bit of like a behind the scenes tutorial of how I do some self portraits and we're going to use the ring light with all the different modifiers so you can see the difference and figure out which one might be best for you. Before I get started, I want you guys to know Godox did send me this product for free, um, not the AD200, but the R200 to try out and give my honest opinion to my followers and let you guys know what I think. One thing I like about this is it is powered by the AD200, so the power output is exactly the same. Something to note is that this ring light does typically have a mono light that is powered through the control right here. However, my firmware on my AD200 is not updated. So I have to update it in order for the mono light to work. So for this video, it's not going to be on. This is what my normal Godox AD200 looks like. And as you guys know, I'm a MagMod user. So in order for MagMod to work, I have to be able to have my mag grip on the head of the light. So what I really like about this is in order to take off the mag mod, it all stays in one piece because this is actually really hard to get on and off the mag mod piece. So to take the mag mod head off or the Fresnel head off and then put on the ring light, it's pretty simple and pretty straightforward. You just put the connection in and click it. Now you may be thinking, well, what the heck do you just hold the flash while you're in the middle of a shoot? Godox sends, it comes included with your purchase of the R200, but there is a storage bag that I have been using. You just put it inside of here, close it up, zip it, and then you can hang this from your light stand or you can put it Honestly, it's small enough. You can hang it from your pocket if you want. Put it inside your pocket if your pockets are big enough. But you can see it just hangs nice right here. It's easy, it's good for being on the go. And if you are really like a running gun style photographer, this light can actually attach to your camera. So all you do is you thread your camera through right here and it shoots directly through the ring light. However, I have the umbrella bracket attached right now because that is one of the modifiers that we're gonna be using in a minute is the umbrella. I love diffusion through umbrellas, so I was really excited when I saw that they were offering this. However, let's go over a couple modifiers that I think are really valuable and then we will get right into the studio and start trying them out. So these modifiers come separately if you would like to purchase them with the R200. They don't come with it. Um, but it kind of is gonna be dependent upon the type of light that you like and what you're gonna be using it for. So the first modifier that I have is the beauty dish. I don't do a lot of work with beauty dishes, but I'm really excited to do some close-up portraits with this today and see how it looks because I really do like the look of a beauty dish, but it's very simple to attach. So you just take this right here. There's a thread on the back. You take it off. So you attach it around the edges. And then you just re-thread this little screw back in. And that's how it attaches. So you can see right here, here's the screw. I just re-threaded it back in so that it then attaches to the edge of the Godox. So now we have the beauty dish on the light. 
Now, one of the things that I really like about this, you guys know how much I love grids. Godox sent me both styles of grids and three of each one. If you're new to using grids, basically what grids do is they narrow the spread of the light. So if you're looking to have a very narrow spread of light, you would want to stack more grids. Because we are using the beauty dish, we're going to put a grid on the dish itself and it attaches very similarly, except there's no thread. They're basically just little clips and you clip it on. And you hear that click, you know that it's ready to go. Okay, so this first grid is going to offer some narrowing of the light spread for us. So if we wanna stack the grids, all you do is you clip it onto the interior of the previous grid. So now, super simple. Now I have two grids stacked. I could put the third on if I want, but let's go into the studio and see the difference between one grid versus two. Okay, so we're in the studio. We've got the R200 right here, and I have my R6 set up on a tripod so that we can do some remote shooting. Let's start out with the R200 with just the beauty dish. And you guys can see as we add more and more on the difference between adding one grid to two grids and then the different modifiers like the umbrella and then maybe just bare bulb, no beauty dish at all. So I'm gonna get a chair and let's go ahead and lift this light up just a tad so that it's not illuminating from underneath my chin. We're gonna go ahead and shut these lines so that we don't have any ambient light going. And today, let's bring down the beige. So these are just gonna be portraits. You're not gonna see the bottom over here. And if you have any questions about this paper, this is Savage. It's the larger size, and I will put the link in the description below if you are interested in purchasing it. I think this is the color pecan. I have the color almond too, but I like this one a little bit more because it's a little less yellow. Uh, so yeah, I'll put the link down below for you guys. So let's get started. Flash power is at 1 over 32, so I'm going to bump that power up. 116 power. You can see with the ring light, there's a really contrasted shadow behind me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move forward and I'm probably going to need to turn this flash down, but let's just see the difference. Okay. Yeah, it is way too harsh. So let's turn that back down to one over 32. Okay, way better. And let's do one more. You can see that the shadow behind me kind of dissipates because I've now moved away from the backdrop and the power of the flash is less. So the beauty dish gives a very specific look. I'm going to even move just a little bit closer. So I'm on a 16 to 35 lens here because it's what I was filming on before, but typically I'd be using a 50 millimeter or even an 85. It just depends on the look I'm looking to get. Right now, this is just for an example purpose. I'm gonna stay on the 16 to 35, but I like the look of the beauty dish a lot. So let's put a grid on and you can see the narrowing, narrowing spread. You can also see the difference in the honeycomb sizes. That means that this is going to be a little bit more narrow than this one. It's gonna allow more spread. So let's start with a big one. When you use a grid, it also reduces the power output of the light. So it, you could still be at one over 32 and the light spread is going to reduce, but it's also going to reduce the amount of light as well. Okay, so you can see the light power has reduced just ever so slightly. The spread of the light has reduced as well. All right, so let's add another grid. You can see the reduction again. Two grids on, let's see. Okay, that has reduced it even more. I do like how the light is very soft. Um, but I'm not going to increase the power until I put this third grid on because I want you guys to see the difference. So there's like barely any light coming through now. So let's increase the power to a quarter power. Whoa, major difference. Do you see this? It's really like a very narrow spread. So let's take these off and just do one grid. And you can see how that looks with a more intensified. We can increase the aperture too so that it balances out. 
Okay, so it's really narrowed focus. It's also way too bright, so I'm gonna bump that down back to like 116. I'm gonna go down an aperture to eight. Okay, so you can see with the beauty dish, it's pretty contrasted light. I'm gonna go ahead and take it off and you're gonna do just a regular grid, no beauty dish. And then we're gonna play with the umbrella because that's probably what I'll use most. I don't really like the look of like bare bulb or um, just grids unless I'm in like a really wide scenic situation and I need a very powerful light. To be honest, I will most likely use the R200 in studio situations versus taking this in the field. You could take it in the field because the setup is pretty light and easy, but I like to be very running gun style. So if I did use it in the field, I could see it being more like on camera flash for me. Let's do just bare ring flash. And I'm gonna turn the power down because it's gonna be way too powerful. So we'll go back to one over 32. So pretty balanced already, very simple, just kind of a typical flash. Now let's add a grid to it. So you can see the significant difference of just adding one grid, the spread reduces significantly. Let's add two. And if you're looking for a specific grid, Godox does have them online so you can look at the difference and compare them as well. I'm not specifying the the grid spread on these because I took them out of the box already. So I don't really remember which is which, but here's the second one. So it's like pretty much only illuminating my face. And we're gonna put this one on so you can see, it's pretty much going to be like a light on my nose. And that's it. Yeah, really, really soft, very narrowed spread. So now let's play with the umbrella a little bit. He sent me this umbrella and it's very cool as far as like I could see myself using this in the field because it's pretty small and not like a big huge umbrella that's going to sail away like a big sailboat. However, I like a little bit more of like a para parabolic umbrella which they have linked online as well so you can find those. Um, like this soft box I have over here. It's actually a Godox softbox. All right, so for the umbrella, all you have to do is you're gonna open the drawstring, put the entire flash inside. First, you're gonna feed this through. And obviously, the bigger the umbrella, the more diffusion you're gonna get. So now you just wanna wrap this around. Make sure you zip this up. So now we'll close this as tight as we can so that we don't have a lot of spread leaking out. So here we go. Move this back. So we have the umbrella. This is gonna diffuse the light. And you can see that it's a lot of a softer spread versus a more contrasted beauty dish. Now I'm gonna increase the light power on this as well because of the spread of the light diffuses it more outwards. And it is too bright, so let's bring it down. Bring it down. So now we're at 1 16th power. And I like that power output. The only thing that I would do in the future is have another light on this side um, to get that shadow to go away because you can see the shadow on the backdrop. Let's move a little closer. We'll try that one more time. Okay, so a few other modifiers that Godox does have available are the gels. Now, you guys know that from this video, I love to use gels, and I love to use them specifically with sunsets to accentuate the colors. I don't really use gels in the studio all that much, although you definitely could. Um, but you can see from right here, they have tons of different gels and the ones that I would probably use, they're just the standard like color correction gels. I don't know if they have more creative colored gels, but the ones that I use the most would be the quarter CTO and very rarely do I use the CTBs, but 
CTO seems to be the one I like to use the most. All right, you guys, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I do plan to make some more videos with the R200, so please comment down below if there's something specific you want me to make. I think the next one's going to be in, in the field with the R200, and then I would like to use it a little bit more in the studio for some professional portraits with the beauty dish. So if you have any questions, please let me know. I'd love to help out as much as I can, but that's it for today. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. It helps me out and the channel. And I will see you guys next week. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.